So uh, just uh, uh, summing up again, within the Reformed Church, there are three main views of all Israel. And uh, Dr. Venema, that is Dr. Cornelis Venema, who is the president of Mid-America Reformed Seminary and a professor there in Dyer, Indiana, uh, has a very helpful article um, on Romans 11 and specifically Romans 11:26. The article is entitled, In This Way All Israel Will Be Saved, a study of Romans 11.26, and it was published in the Mid-America Journal of Theology, um, number 22, 2011. I don't know if that one is available online mm. or not. If it is, then maybe we can include it in the show notes. Certainly. But um, uh, Mid-America does publish their journals online after so many, so many years. So this one might be online. Uh, but Dr. Venema examines those three views that have been held within the Reformed Church in terms of their strengths and weaknesses, and he identifies advocates within the Reformed Church of each one of those views. And uh, on the first view, Dr. Venema says the following, the first view takes this phrase, all Israel, to refer to the people of Israel as a totality though not necessarily every individual Jew, who will be converted at some time after the fullness of the Gentiles has been gathered. And so this would refer to a future event, Mm -hmm. a future conversion. Relative to us. Future relative to us even, yes. Certainly future relative to Paul, Mm -hmm. but a future relative to us even, uh, because this hasn't happened yet. Uh, so, uh, according to this first view, uh, Paul has Paul is making a prediction about an event that will occur in the future, and that event is a conversion on a mass scale of ethnic Israelites. Now, um, Dr. Venema identifies a few of the advocates of this view, one of which is uh, Professor John Murray, uh, Orthodox Presbyterian minister, uh, held to this view, advocated this view, as did uh, Charles Hodge. 19th century Presbyterian theologian and professor at Princeton Theological Seminary. And to my surprise, I did not know this until I read Dr. Venema's article, Gerhardus Voss hey. uh, even advocated this view. Uh, Voss covers it uh, just briefly in the Pauline Eschatology, uh, but it's there. And if our listeners have a copy of the Pauline Eschatology and want to look it up, they can look up in the index, Romans eleven twenty six or just Romans 11, and then go back and read everywhere where Dr. Voss uh, commented on this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Dr. Venema himself um, also uh, says that he thinks this is the best view, this is the most plausible view. And he, so he puts forth a case uh, in favor of this view. And um, of all of the articles and books out there that advocate this particular view, I think Dr. Venema's is the best um, the most compelling, the Mm -hmm. most persuasive argument out there. Uh, He summarizes the landscape as a whole, and then he points out strengths and weaknesses of each view, and then he gives some good persuasive arguments in favor of this one. You've labeled some uh, representatives of this view, but what type of, uh, for lack of a better phrase, eschatological view is, is this usually more often find a home in? Well, it more often finds a home among post-millennialists. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as we've seen, some amillennialists some mm-hmm. also would hold to this view. Uh, Voss, we would certainly categorize as an amillennialist. And those terms, that distinction between post-mill and amill is is recent, right? It's very new. Mm-hmm. And uh, so if you go back to uh, the 19th century when Charles Hodge was writing, there was no distinction between those two things really in place. Right, and um, the ordering of events that you find in in the book of Revelation, for example, mm-hmm. are are the same between post-millennial and amillennial. The mm-hmm. difference can be shades of differences. They're not necessarily always really hard and fast differences, but the differences often regard the character of the millennial kingdom and the timing of it. Mm-hmm. But in yes, terms of right. the ordering of, of all the events, millennial kingdom, return of Christ, etc., mm-hmm. the resurrection, yeah. those things are the same but uh, mm-hmm. among amillennialists and postmillennialists. Yes. So amillennialism is a subset of postmillennialism mm. because yeah. amillennialists yeah. believe that Christ will return after the millennium. Indeed. The second view that is held by um, theologians within the Reformed Church takes uh, the phrase all Israel 
to be a reference to the salvation of all the elect, Jew and Gentile alike, gathered through the preaching of the gospel in the whole course of the history of redemption. And that's how Dr. Venema summarizes it in his article. And so Israel, in verse 26, does not refer to a distinct people among the peoples of the earth, but to the people of God in general and uh, in a comprehensive sense, uh, embracing Jew and Gentile alike, all that belong to the church. So all Israel simply is the church, the whole church. To use the metaphor Paul uses in Romans 11, it's the whole olive tree comprised of both natural and unnatural branches, which would be believing elect Jews, natural right. branches, so not and just the the, wild branches right. like us. You and I are wild branches, right? You got it. Un unnatural, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wild. Um, so all Israel there includes all the branches, clearly, not merely the natural ones. I got it. Yes, according mm -hmm. to the second view. Right. All Israel in verse 26 uh, means the whole olive tree, which can be defined in terms of Israel in terms of the root of the tree anyhow, because it has its root in the covenant that God made with the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And um, you might think here also of what Paul has says, said earlier in Romans chapter 4 regarding Abraham being the father of all believers. And of what Paul says in Galatians 3 concerning those who are of Christ are the seed of Abraham. They're the offspring of Abraham. And then Galatians chapter 6, where Paul refers to the church as the Israel of God, which there seems to have the church in view as a whole. Well, that itself's a bit debated, but uh, I, I, I find that, that Kai being ep, ep, ep exegetical myself, or some says some, to gloss it, it says something, to peace be upon all who walk by this rule. Kai, or and, or I would say, that is the Israel of God. So the Israel of God is the people who walk by the rule that Paul mm -hmm. labeled. Right. It's not an additional group of people. You have people that walk by God's word, and then you have Israel as mm -hmm. <laughs> distinct. Right. So the Kai could be translated namely. Namely, or that is, or that is yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So an advocate of this second view um that all Israel means the church as a whole, Jew and Gentile alike, uh, would be John Calvin. Uh, Calvin definitely sets forth this view in his commentary on Romans 11. And O. Palmer Robertson also held to this view, at least um, at a later stage he did. In the chapter that I mentioned earlier, he advocates a different view, uh, which we'll get to in just a minute, which is view number three. But Robertson ends up in in another book that he wrote called The Israel of God, mm -hmm. ends up taking this particular view. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Venema says that the third view takes all Israel to be a reference to the total number of the elect from among the people of Israel. According to this view, the fullness of Israel refers to the sum total of the remnant of elect Jews whom God has gathered, past, is gathering, present, and will yet gather throughout the entire history of redemption until the time of Christ's second coming. So that's the third main view, and advocates of that view would include Herman Bovink, Herman Ritterboss, uh, Anthony Hokema, and his book entitled uh, The Bible in the Future, uh, which um, I read in seminary but reread when I was studying Romans chapter 11, and I think Hokema made the most compelling case for this particular view. Yeah. And then Robert Strimple, in a book entitled um, The Millennium and Beyond, Three mm -hmm. Views, which I have here. Mm -hmm. uh, Strimple uh, advocates uh, amillennialism in this book and has a, a good, uh, some commentary, good commentary on Romans chapter 11. And then I would put Richard Gaffin in this view as well, even though Dr. Gaffin has not written a treatise on Romans 11 or on this particular subject, mm. uh, he does in a footnote in one of his chapters um, reveal that this is the view he, he leans towards. So this may least. be a, a place where, where Dr. Gaffin departs a little bit from John Murray. Yes, I believe that is the mm -hmm. case. Mm 